All right, everyone, this is Sandcast Beach Volleyball with uh, the still absent Tri Born, uh, who is down in Cancun for uh, the next three weeks. Uh, and if, if he wins every match, so if he wins country quota, qualifier, makes it to the medal rounds, yep. wins country quota, qualifier, to the medal rounds, CQ, quality, medal rounds, he'll play 18 days in a row. Um, so we're giving Try a break from Sandcast. He also took off for our last episode with Kim Hildreth. Um, and so in today, uh, just me and uh, my boy James Shaw. Thanks for having me. It? Yeah, thanks for making the bike ride down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun to be fun to be local. Yeah, yeah, it uh, it's good to have you down. Um, and I think you you probably had like the beach volley the most beach volleyball introduction to the beach volleyball world possible. Like, so you. You, I forget like how you got in touch with JM. So for our listeners, uh, it was, had to be through Molly. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I was living with JM Plummer, and me and Delaney were looking to get our own spot. We'd been married for a year. We're like, yep. all right, let's get our own spot. And then so I put up a thing on Instagram said if anybody's look, like is moving or knows a place. So Stafford texts me and he says we're moving out. And so we, so this place that we're recording in right now was Stafford's for seven years. Right, right. And so Stafford moves out. I move out of Stafford's place, and you had found out through the grapevine or Molly uh, that, that our room was now opening up. So then you filled in for us uh, with JM in the penthouse. Yeah, that's uh, right. And then penthouse. That, so, yeah. So you just came. It was perfect. I was just like, the beach volleyball world, we just uh, we added a really large member, and it was just a yep. perfect introduction. The, the, the cycle of life. The cycle yeah. of volleyball life. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, passing through Hermosa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed that. While I enjoyed that place for, for a couple of months, it was, it was time to go. Um, yeah. And you, yeah. you moved across the street. Moved across the street. It wasn't a big move. Wasn't a big move, no. <laughs> just, just the bed, which is a California king bed, which I'm really, I'm, I'm stoked about yeah. that. Yeah. I'm and you need a big one. How tall are you? I'm 6'8". Okay. You like to call six, me 6'10". I like to call I, you 6'10". Yeah, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty textbook 6'8", like, yeah, okay. right on the money. So like, yeah. anytime someone blocks me, they automatically grow three inches. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, he's 7'2". Like, come on. He's got a 7'6 <laughs> wingspan. I mean, yeah. he's supposed to do that. Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were laughing with Avery the other day. Because uh, we were talking about how tall people are, and JM said that Ed was like 6'10", and Avery was like, no way, Ed's not 6'10". That would not surprise me, though. And 6'9", at least. Yeah. And yeah. then with Ed's wingspan and hands, he's huge. And then we were talking about you, and JM was like, oh, yeah, he's at least 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, and Avery was like, no way. No way. And I was like, oh, 6'10", easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were t- actually talking about that today. Um, I don't even know if you were there. Maybe, maybe you left by then, but... Yeah, after after practice today, we were talking about how everybody just kind of looks the same same height in the sand. Yeah, because you know you could be you could be standing in a in a divot and yeah. and look like you're six <laughs> five and you're six ten, dude. You could run up the ant hill. Yeah. and you're six six. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a little more even of a playing. It just yeah, it just makes things a little bit more even on yeah. the on the sand. Whereas yeah. if you're well, if everybody's in shoes on the on the hardwood floor, it's and yeah, yeah everybody you, you know you know <laughs> who's tall true. and who's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you've been. So you moved down here in what, like February? Yeah, first day of February. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how's the transition been going from indoor to sand? It's been surprisingly quick. Yeah. Um, I came into it thinking, well, f- first off, going back to November when I came back from uh, from Italy, I just cut that season short and just decided I'd, I'd been thinking about it for a while and decided, all right, now's the time. Like COVID, whatever. Like all yeah. these all these factors kind of played into it. And I told myself, all right, I'm just going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen. I'm going to move down there, get right into the thick of things. And it might take me a year to like right. stop looking like an idiot out there. Yeah. <laughs> and that was basically the goal coming in, coming down just here. to not look stupid. Just to not it. look stupid <laughs> <laughs> after, you know, after a year. Um, but yeah, surprisingly, pretty quickly getting in with, with guys like you and guys guys like uh you know some some folks who were playing down in Cancun already and yeah. and uh you know I feel I wouldn't say confident with those guys but uh competent you know like yeah. I feel like I can I can play ball with with pretty much anybody down here which is yeah. exciting and, and I mean you proved it pretty fast in the mini tournament I mean you and Sean uh <laughs> who's a fantastic player that like yeah. almost no one's heard of yeah um, right <laughs> and soon will I hope yeah. uh I mean you guys beat Cayman Theo yeah, um, that was huge. That's a good team. Yeah, I mean that was, 
I mean, you talk about confidence builders, that's it yeah. right there. Um, yeah, it was to, to say it was, you know, to say I saw that coming would not be truthful at right. all. But, you know, it's it's a great, great thing to have in the back pocket when you're thinking, all right, yeah. can I can I hang with these guys? You, you know, if you can do that, I think you can, because those yeah. guys are obviously one of them's an Olympian. One of them's been playing on the tour for a really long time and, you know, a main draw guy for however many years. So, yeah, it, it was it was a really good, really good win to, to have that, um, especially early in the morning when... I feel like personally, I I'm at the worst in the morning, because <laughs> um, you know playing indoor volleyball. That's true. I never matches like you never guys are, happen you're at night. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I never thought about the total time reversal of schedule. Before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's for the most part matches were like no earlier than four p.m. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, morning time for West Coast people, but. Yeah, Europe, yeah, Europe time it was usually four or later. So, okay. yeah, never had to really get up for a turn or get get up for a match that early. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think maybe it's a little bit back to my like club volleyball roots yeah. and, and back to the back to the old high school days of yeah. of having to get up and compete right away. Um, Do you? But that's new. It's so yeah. man. So I would like. I'm a morning person. I'm usually yeah. up by like six or before. Um, and so like when we practice at 10, I've already done like three hours of work and yeah. I'm like ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I love being in the morning. Right. I, I like struggle with night matches cause I can't wind down. Like yeah. when we were in Doha, all of our matches were at night and I like couldn't fall asleep till three or four. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, that's how I always was too. Like, okay. Yeah. Especially playing in front of, you know, a lot, a lot of people and there's a lot of energy in a gym you yeah. know, pre COVID. Um, yeah, even after bat- matches in college, I think that was the case too. It's yeah. just yeah, it's just really hard to like feed off all that energy and have the adrenaline going and have, you know, all of the feelings that you have going into a big match and to be able to calm that down right after. It's just so hard. So yeah, yeah I 100% agree. Yeah. yeah that's- well, you uh so obviously you've played in in some pretty high stakes matches before um at Stanford uh and yeah. in Italy too. Yeah. Was it? I mean, obviously, you were raised. So your dad's Don Shaw, um, who's like a bit of a legend at yeah, Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> was there any like pressure, or like how was it as a kid? Was it just like a given that you were going to be playing volleyball, or was it just you know what if you if you gravitated towards that path, you gravitated towards it? That I think that was more it. Okay. I think uh, growing up, my dad pushed me to, to just be active in a lot of different things and yeah. same with my mom. Um, I mean, both of them were, were athletes in their own right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, my dad played baseball. He got, he was drafted out of high school playing no baseball kidding. and he, he was a five sport athlete and played basketball in college and a little overseas. And so, yeah, he was, he was doing it all. And he, that's yeah. kind of just how he expected me to go about it. Obviously okay. nowadays it's tougher to play one sport you know, or not play one sport and yeah. specialize, you know, at least at, after high school, I think that's, that's usually the case. But, um, yeah, I, I think w- when I was like 13 or 14 was when I started to s- focus on volleyball, focus on, okay. you know, I started having looks from some, some young national team camps and, and under, under 16, under 18 sort of camps. And I was like, ah, maybe volleyball is the thing I should do. Yeah. As, you know, as you start to have success in one thing, you start to kind of you follow that. And, that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, ooh, this is this is enticing. This is, you know, this might right. be it. Um, it's so exciting as a kid. You're like, wait, that college yeah, just yeah. It wants me. Yeah. It's talking to yeah. me. When you get recruited, it's on such a, that's, oh yeah, that's a different. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a big moment. Yeah, and then as soon as you get to a place and you're like, wait, why doesn't everybody want me anymore? <laughs> I'm just one of the kids now. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, yeah. Growing up, I played basketball and baseball and football and yeah, every, everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just just ended up 14 or 15 years old, deciding to get into club volleyball. Actually, followed my sister into it. I don't. I don't think my dad had as much of a, a part in it as my sister, my older sister Jordan. Okay. Um, she. She was into the whole club volleyball scene, and she was getting recruited. And so I was like, "Ooh, this looks cool! Like yeah. I, I could go hang out at a club tournament all day and yeah. have fun." Um, and you know, the relationships that you build with your teammates in that whole year of a of a club volleyball oh, yeah. season—that's that's something that I kind of fell in love with too. Is was having that camaraderie with a team. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what got me into into volleyball and. Um, kind of just led me to led me to stay. I, I always I always kind of grew up around Stanford and right obviously that was the the goal the dream that I wanted to go play at Stanford yeah um but I 
I was realistic that, you know, it's, it's hard to get in yeah, there, obviously. The hardest program, I mean, the hardest yeah. school in the world to get into. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely up there. Um, so, you know, I had, I, had to, I had to make sure I did my due diligence to, right. to, to have, some, have some backup plans. And, uh, you know, I went on a lot of visits. And, and it, so it wasn't a foregone conclusion that I was going right. to go play at Stanford. But, um, you know, it worked out. And I worked my, worked my behind off to get there and... Uh, sneaked in by the <laughs> by the whatever by the by the fingernail and uh yeah and it and it worked out and it was it was kind of a dream the whole way through to be yeah. honest it was the first year was obviously a challenge freshman year you're just what, so you, when was your freshman year 2012 to 13 yeah okay got yeah. it yeah so that was uh i mean we had a pretty talented team we had we had talent my whole career there and uh my sophomore year i think especially we had you know brian cook steve irvin oh man eric Dude, mahalski that I was, just, that was uh, a stacked team i just saw steve at a four-man tournament down in huntington i hadn't seen that guy <laughs> yeah he's in, still hanging out around I mean, here <laughs> since like avp hawaii of yep. 2019 yeah. uh him and john schwengel both made their yeah. first main draws together yeah. and then uh hadn't seen him since yeah. we stayed in touch kind of throughout covid and i saw him I was like stevie yep <laughs> That's he's, all, he's i love married all these now. names yeah <laughs> yeah and then grant delgado was our starting libero i mean i've oh, I, awesome. i've grown close with delgados and it's awesome to be playing in front of their house every yeah. day so that's a cool little connection that we've sort of come full circle that's on. awesome but uh yeah, I mean, it, that was a fun group, for sure. We yeah. made it to the national championship and lost, but uh, it was, yeah. I mean, my my four years at Stanford were just such a great experience overall, so. I was, uh, so before you came, I was reading, so you were like the, some kind of boys high school player of the year. Yeah, so and, I don't know, something, and I, something I, like there's that so many <laughs> There's so many different kind of awards, so maybe it was, yeah. it was like conference yeah. or whatever it may be, but uh, yeah. in the write-up, you said, you know, I, I would love to win a national championship at Stanford. Then I would love to go play overseas, either in Europe or South America. I'd love to try out for the Olympic team. But it's all going to take a lot of work. And I was reading this. I was like, holy shit. Like, James just predicted that when he was, like, 17 years old, his next, like, three life steps. I know you didn't win the Natty title at Stanford, but you were there. Yeah, yeah. We, that was, you know, that's, that's something that's, it's just so hard to, like, so many things have to go right yeah. for that to happen. So it's... It's one of those goals you you put out there and say like, I'm gonna do this even if it's crazy. Right. I'm gonna do it, and that those are the kind of goals that I've always sort of set for myself. It's just like yeah. the thing that people think is sort of crazy. I mean, that's in men's volleyball, it's not that crazy to win a national championship. There's only right. there's only 35 schools that can you know in yeah. a given year, but um, yeah, I, you know, I've always sort of set those goals for myself. And like the next audacious one after after Stanford was was going to being an Olympian, being a, being a gold medalist. Yeah. And so that's that's the current one that I'm working on. Yeah. You know? and, and you uh, were like pretty dang close for Rio, right? Yeah, I was. A, well, I wasn't super close. I was an alternate, okay. but I, it was kind of a foregone conclusion that that Micah and would Micah you, Christensen. Okay, so you would have be been going guys. as a setter because you played yeah. a little bit of opposite too, right? Yeah. So I started out. At Stanford, I was mostly a setter. Okay. Um, played a little bit of outside, a little bit of opposite, sort of throughout my high school career. Played, I think I just kind of played all of it in my high school career. But then at Stanford, played sparingly at the attacking positions. Okay. And then um, after a couple of years overseas, I was like, I feel, I feel stuck. Yeah. Um, you know, there's nobody's going to really beat out Mike Christensen on the right. national team. Like, he's going to be there as long as he wants it. Yeah. And... You know, Matt Anderson looks to be like this could be his last quad, or you know, two two quads away from being from being done. So maybe there's a shot at opposite. Right. Um, every once in a while, I jump in there at opposite in practice and just yeah. have a blast. Like, yeah. absolutely love life for the for that day because <laughs> it's a setter's dream. And so you so you you make the change and you're like, right. oh, this is amazing. I'm gonna do this forever. <laughs> um, and so I made the switch and I, and I actually did decently well. I, I Got got a contract uh, pretty much immediately in Poland for okay. their, their best team, just as their second opposite. Oh, nice! Because um, I had a, like a fairly decent tournament where uh, I think it was a Pan Am Cup or something like that in Mexico, where we were down two oppos and we needed a guy. And yeah. Coach Dave Hunt was just like uh, of Pepperdine. He was just like uh, 
James, I know you played oppo. Like, yeah. can you can you warm up? I need you, dude. <laughs> and I went in and like I don't. I think it was like I went twelve for fourteen or something ridiculous. Well, that's like, pretty good. Career <laughs> in that match. I don't know indoor too well, but that seems like a pretty good percentage. And that's the best I ever played at oppo. After like any any time after that too. But uh, yeah, after that point, I was like, hmm, maybe maybe opposite is the, yeah. is the switch. And so I did that for a couple years. Um, Health has always been an issue for me, especially okay. in the indoor, and, and uh, so I, I didn't, I, I wasn't able to really stay that healthy as an opposite. Okay. My shoulders started wearing down, and my I've, foot. I've my seen your knees. Been a You've got a couple scars there. Yeah, those are actually fine. I mean, I, I had okay. I had knee surgery in, in school at Stanford, but it okay. was more of a minor minor thing. And then the the big scar on my left knee is just from when I was super young. It was okay. Just a little, it's getting dinged up. A little accident. <laughs> Yeah, my dad actually passed out when that happened too. It was, it was oh, no that's a whole it's a whole long story. But um, <laughs> the paramedics came in and they were kind of like, "Who do we help? The old man on the ground or the kid <laughs> with kid. the who's like sit, sitting up and like asking people questions?" <laughs> um, and he loves to tell that story too. Just yeah. But anyway, that, so yeah, that, my knees have been great. Okay. Um, you know, so far so good. Yeah. But uh, we're going to the right surface for him. <laughs> That's the thing, I'm sure man. Sure, it feels a lot better. Yeah, I, I feel way healthier than I did at this time last year. I mean, obviously, COVID happened, so I wasn't really playing at this right. time last year. But um, I'd say two years ago at this time, I, I feel a lot better physically, and uh, I feel like with that, I can I can start to make some real progress just in, yeah. my, in my career, just because that's that's really been the only thing holding me back. I feel like mentally, I've always been engaged and fully about my goals and you know getting after them it's yeah. just kind of the, the injury hiccups that that sort of did me in so, yeah yeah that's that's the exciting thing is being on the sand is really it's helped yeah it's pretty great we uh so me and delaney we have this little club that we run with uh marcio Sicoli. i don't yeah. know if you've met him yeah um, i haven't met him but yeah but so a lot of the girls that we have are, are they're indoor players and some of them are like they're still scared to dive like yeah. they don't want to dive yeah and so we, I just told him, I was like, I was like, hold on, can you, before we do this drill, just like roll on the sand for yeah, one just second, roll around. just dive. Get sand. And they, they do. I was like, did that hurt? They're like, no. I was like, was it fun? They're like, kind of. It's like, should dive. Just play in the sand. It's so much better. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's just a whole, yeah, that's a whole other thing is you don't have to like end up after a weekend of playing volleyball with just scrapes all over your knees and bruises everywhere. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's nice to just lay in the sand too. Yeah. I used to hate getting covered in sand. Like, really? Same thing. I mean, when I was younger, I was like, oh, sand. Oh, <laughs> like, I have it all over me. It's gross. And, I, and especially because I'm a big sweater. Yeah. Um, that made things even more difficult. But now I'm just like, yeah, let's get covered in sand. Yeah. It's well, kinda, did, you, did you play beach growing up? No, I really didn't. Okay. Um, I mean, we had a couple sand courts at Stanford that my dad actually used to like teach. Those teach. courts are awesome. Well, the, the new courts the, for okay. sure. But no, they weren't there when you were they there. They weren't there. Okay. No, they were. They go, those got built like maybe two or three years into my Stanford my, okay. my college career. Because that complex is beautiful. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Imagine that I, Stanford has good facilities. <laughs> <laughs> for real, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I'm, I'm lucky enough to know Coach Fuller and, and Lauren Fendrick up there. So they, whenever I'm up there, they, they're nice enough to let me use okay. the facility too, which is just like a whole other thing, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I grew up kind of going to my dad's PE beach classes at Stanford. He used to like okay. teach those on the side when he was out That's of season. That's great. And, and he also taught golf classes. I never, I never really took those. But I would show up at the beach class and just kind of hang out with with the college students yeah. who, who none of them know how to play beach volleyball, but, <laughs> but you know, I could like hold my own in there as a, as a 10 year old, you know, 12 okay. year old kid. And, uh, that's kind of how I got my feet wet, but I never really played seriously. I was okay. always, you know, fully indoor and didn't even think about the beach, but, yeah. um, always super interested in, in the AVP and, yeah. and the international tour and the Olympics and yeah. all, you know, all that stuff. But, just never like really seriously saw myself as a beach player until yeah. until a couple of years ago, you know. What prompted that thing? Because like I mean, you went pretty much straight. You left you left Italy, right? Yeah. And then yeah. you went here, and you I mean you like started practicing like seven days a week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the I, that's the thing about I don't know, maybe just about me is I feel like once I choose to do something, I'm just yeah. fully fully into it. Yeah. Um, 
Because the seed had, I feel like the seed had to have been planted before you left Italy. Yeah, like yeah, you had it was, to have known, for like, sure. Honestly, like one of the one of the things that sort of helped kept watering the seeds is listening to this podcast. I'm, oh, I'm really? serious. Yeah, I've, I've, awesome. I've listened for a couple of years, like <laughs> since, awesome. since the inception. <laughs> Even when I was like holed up in my apartment in, in Italy or France or wherever, I'd be listening to you guys, like, yeah. talking to talking to all all the you know top people in the sport, and it, yeah. it would just kind of like get the get the motor running. Oh, a super bit. cool. Yeah. Um, and obviously watching watching events and watching the, the McKibbins, you know, straight live yeah. streaming stuff and um, all of that stuff matters, you know, it, like just just stoking the interest a little bit. Uh, and I, I think a couple of years ago when I went back to Stanford to finish my degree, I had, I had like a quarter left. I had to finish. Um, I decided to sort of go half indoor and half beach just to just to sort of see like what, yeah. what it would take. And um, I played a decent amount with Evan Enriquez, uh, a teammate of mine at Stanford, and he's, okay. he's a Hawaii boy. Um, and he was sort of testing the waters of, of beach volleyball too. And yeah. So we, we would train a little bit with Lauren up there at Stanford, and, and Coach Fuller would, would give us some, some tips. Damn good hands. Yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> um, and that, I, that got me super excited about the possibility. Yeah. You know? I thought, okay, there's – Obviously, for, for me, there's a long way to go just to make a switch like that because I yeah. feel like Bambi out here. But at the same time, like I'm I'm enjoying myself again. I'm not, yeah. you know, it's not like I'm I'm playing for a salary today. Or, yeah. I mean, at this at this level now, you know that that we're at, it's like yeah, okay, we're we're, we're playing for money. But right. back then, it was like shoot, I could I could see myself doing this just because yeah. it's fun. Right. Like it's fun to compete and just just play to win again yeah. instead of you know what I was doing overseas, which was kind of a grind and it's, yeah. a, it's an eight month season and you have no, there's not really any, any, any real freedom. It's just a, it's just a slog. You yeah. To like just make it through for your, for your contract. Yeah. I've heard that. So I know, I mean, Taylor Crab played in France for yeah. a year yeah. and he's like, dude, it, it sucked. Yeah. You know, cause like from the perspective of say a listener who doesn't play volleyball professionally, they're like, Oh, like you get to go play in Switzerland or Italy or yeah. Poland. Like that's yeah. so cool. You're overseas. But you talking to Taylor or you or uh, Andy Penish was in uh, sure. Switzerland, yeah, yeah. and he was like, never. Yeah, Swiss, Swiss league stuff to play in. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I think again. I talked to Chase Frischman, too. He had to, he had to work at like a nine-to-five job yeah. part of the season, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, that's terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, unless you, unless you are – I think there's a few situations where it's kind of doable for, for Americans. Like if, if you have your whole family over there – Yeah. And that's your life. You dedicate yourself to being overseas and you're going to raise your children over there. Yeah. And you're all about just getting into the culture and finding new places to live and, and speaking new languages like that. That could work for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're like Taylor or me or, or Andy, you know, it's it's guys going over there as a 22, 23 year old and you're, you're surrounded by nobody, you know, like yeah. nobody speaks your language in Switzerland, maybe, but. Um, and you're expected to just be, be a full grown adult and take care of yourself and, you know, including emotionally right. and psychologically, which is something not a lot of, you know, younger, younger people know how to do. Right. So it's like all of those things combined <laughs> and, you know, having, having to, having your happiness sort of rely on how you how you play is yeah. really tough. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, if you don't have that like second thing that you love to do outside of volleyball, or you have a family to kind of keep you grounded, it can yeah. just be really, really tough. So, yeah, yeah. I spent probably a little bit too long sort of learning that lesson. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I tried five times to do it. <laughs> um, you know, I thought maybe opposite is the way to go. Maybe maybe this country is the way to go. Right. Like, yeah, just and then without kind of without the, the indoor national team this last this last year, it was like the, the final straw. Because usually that that was the goal for me. It was like, okay, just get ready for this next summer. Right. But um, sort of getting getting furloughed from the national team last last summer. That's when tough. They, when they cut a few guys because of because of COVID, it was yeah. like, I don't really see the reason to go to go through this eight month process anymore. Right. Um, I just want to go back to love and volleyball. Yeah. So that's that's what I did. <laughs> and and the beach is such a, a cool way to do it. And I feel like, I mean, it, some of the of what you were speaking to overseas. I think one of the most important parts of just like any human being's life is community. Sure. And sure. it's probably a little difficult to have a community, even though I'm sure that you loved your team and the camaraderie yeah. of it. It's hard when 
you don't really speak. You might. I don't know if you speak Italian. For yeah, me. yeah. I, I, I speak enough Italian now to get, okay. get through. The, yeah, get through. You know what you need to get through. Yeah, but France was impossible. Yeah, Poland really impossible. Yeah, so it's no, like no it's, chance. I think it's hard to like develop those bonds that you just like need if you don't have any friends over there to yeah. make it worth. Then you come out to the beach, and it's just everyone is just so close. It's, yeah, it's, it's just a, like this big, gigantic, dysfunctional family. It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, awesome. <sighs> can't even I was thinking about that as I was writing over like okay what am I what am I gonna say <laughs> I was and, and one of the things that popped out was like I really do I really do love the community and how how well everybody gets along I mean obviously there's a little bit of drama because right. of, you know the whole partnership and I deal. think it's needed yeah, you know it's, it's got to be interesting of course yeah yeah and there's you know certain grudges that people hold from college or whatever but right. for the most part everybody's just like now we're all we're all battling to just you know, stay in the game and, and play this sport because we love it and hopefully make some money at it. Yeah. And, and we all, we're all coming kind of from the same situation, which is, you know, humble, humble beginnings and we just love the sport and let's, yeah. let's all get better. So that's, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough about that, that part of being, being in a beach, the beach community now. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've obviously been, been taken in very quick because, um, I mean, you were practicing with Taylor and Casey yeah, and I Chase mean, like pretty early. And I think, um, I mean, obviously, like, you being a, a phenomenal player is a huge help to that. But it is, it. it is a, a tough thing to do because I know, like, the California beach volleyball stigma or stereotype, whatever you want to call it, is that it's, it's super clicky and it's yeah. hard to break in. Yeah, it's very insular, yeah. And it's, it, I, I would say it's just, like, a bit of a meritocracy, you know, where sure. if, if you deserve to be in there, like, if you can be a competent practice opponent, yeah. you'll get in. Yeah. And you proved it early. And yeah. so now, like, you're... <laughs> You're in these big practice groups, and yeah, I, I man, think that's going to help your progress like, that's, be expedited yeah, that's to the huge. moon. That's everything, yeah. I mean, it obviously helps to know people. Like, I, you know, I knew Taylor from before, so that, that yeah. helps. But, yeah, at the same time, you need to, yeah, you need to prove yourself once you, once you get that opportunity. And, and I've been, I guess, fortunate enough to, to you know, take advantage of those chances. And um, feels feels good, man. It feels good to, to be able to jump in and, yeah. and say, hey, yeah, I, I belong out here. Yeah, you know, obviously everybody knows. Like, I'm there's certain things like every every fourth ball I'm gonna chuck it, but you know, the, at least the technique looks like he's yeah, getting there. But like, <laughs> but your hand setting, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And all right, so I I had a theory, still have the theory that I, I don't know if you're like the exception or you're gonna start breaking the rules that indoor yeah. setters make horrific beach setters. <laughs> so like, I've I, seen some I indoor setters. And I'm like, you set the ball? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yes, because I, that's, I mean, that's totally spot on. And that's kind of what I believed coming out here. It was like, yeah. I'm going to have to work really hard to get good at this. Because yeah. most people don't have that, like, that habit that they have to, break, that they have to break. Yeah. They, they just see somebody do it and they're like, okay, this is how you do it. Right. And it's deeper. It's, you know, you just, it's, you control it's the ball. Slower, you yeah. finish all the way through and there's a spot you're going to. You don't, there's no deception or anything like right. that. It's just like, put it in the spot. And... Yeah, and indoor is like, you know, be quick and <laughs> yeah. flick flick it, you know, right. with a lot of power with just just your forearms. Right. And it's just totally different. It's, and yeah. and the footwork is different. <laughs> like my second day out here in Hermosa, I was or my second day getting coached, I guess. I think it was uh, who was it? I can't remember who who told me this, but they were like, Yeah, when you're on the left side, your your left foot should be forward. Yeah. It's like <laughs> what? <laughs> So all these things that I'm when I'm playing, you know, out here, and I had I just had no idea before. Yeah, and th- that's just part of the learning curve. It's just like if I, if I can start to pick those things up quickly and just learn those things really fast, I feel like the rest of my game is just kind of follow it. Yeah, it's, it's just gonna. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a quick little learning process for me because I think, um, you know, physically I, I feel I feel pretty much at the level of of the top players in the world hopefully yeah. and it's just the rest of the game that needs to that needs to catch up so yeah like little little things like <laughs> which foot goes forward and <laughs> yeah how do you finish when you set or like what it where are your where are your hips facing yeah stuff like that i think that those are good problems to have <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> those are your biggest ones <laughs> yeah that, totally yeah exactly exactly yeah that, that, but i'm grateful to have those problems instead of the like can't jump high enough right. or yeah hit hard enough yeah. problems yeah. and i think um 
that you training in Hermosa right yeah. off the bat, like the most difficult place to move around and jump and, and play. I yeah. think that that's like, I mean, definitely the most frustrating yes. place to learn, yes. Yes. but um, also the best because it's your learning curve is going to be so steep. And then when you when you go to like when you're thinking about going to Florida and, and yeah. Texas soon, like that's going to be training I mean, wheels. Yeah, that and my first tournament playing with Chase Frischman was in Florida. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is nice. I'm playing <laughs> yeah. indoor volleyball. Yeah. Like Chase, just put me up there, dude. I'll go and hang and bang. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that that was like a okay. This is. This is Florida sand, all yeah. right. And then Texas was a little bit did it, it was a little bit like like dirtier, grainier, yeah. not not grainier, but like clay, more like clay sand. Yeah. And so finding those differences and kind of knowing what to expect when I go to those places is another yeah. another thing that I need to learn. You yeah. Know? I didn't know Hermosa was the deepest sand mm-hmm. in the you know in in the states probably. Although I don't know, Stanford sand is pretty deep. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean. If I go back, I'm sure it'll say something different, but it's, yeah. it's just not like it's not natural. It's yeah, it probably know. seemed really deep coming from indoor. That's the thing. But now, yeah, if I go <laughs> back, anything like, would I'll seem. Be, deep. I'll probably be like, "Wow, this is really nice and bouncy." <laughs> but yeah, just little things like that. That I think, I think you're right. I think it's I think it's a big beneficial thing for me to start yeah. out here. We're just playing against the best players in the, in the country, for the most part. Yeah, uh, playing in the probably you know starting out in in the year you know the most the windiest part of the year um, yeah geez louise it's March been is yeah, nuts it's been super windy lately yeah. too yeah um and and then the deepest sand yeah it's just like with with kind of like the the most pressure too i think there's like a lot of big i don't know maybe it's just the way i feel but i feel like there's a lot of big eyes you know watching daily because if you're playing on 16th like that's the spot everyone's there yeah yeah no, so, well now no one's there well yeah it's, everybody's so in Cancun. it's crazy yeah. it's all yeah. my friends it's, are it's gone. A desert. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which is, you know, kind of nice, too, because it's nice and quiet. We can yeah. just hear ourselves talking. Yeah. But it's uh, it's a cool, it's a really cool environment to learn in. Yeah. Just, uh, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm really loving it. Yeah. yeah. And you, I think you did something that I haven't really seen an indoor player or, or just someone new coming in uh, and that you kind of built a little team immediately. Because um, I feel like most indoor players or, say, like college players, yeah. coming to beach they really struggle because you go from having a coach a trainer a nutritionist like you have a team telling you what to do and then you got mark fishman yep, yep. um and now you and sean are playing together and, and sean can't play for the u.s which right. is a bummer but right. um you, you guys are awesome as a team yeah i but mean like, you built that quick yeah i don't even necessarily think that i did that mi- like mindfully either yeah. um <laughs> i think it's uh, yeah i think you're right i think it's just a it's kind of a natural thing for me to just feel like I need a, need a team or, need, yeah. you know, need a couple of years to, to bounce thoughts off yeah. of or, or, you know, have, have people that I know I can train with on a, on a regular basis. I think that would kind of be the goal is to like have a, have a group, you know, of people that you know you can train with each week and, yeah. um, and maybe have a few coaches that can bop in and out yeah. that, that, you know, you trust. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's just been huge for that. That part's been huge for my growth too. Just having that part out of the way, and and I think before I was very unsure of of like what was the next step. Yeah. What, what do I need to, do to to think about next, or like who do I need to be playing with, or who do I, which tournament do I need to go to? Now it's kind of like a, you know, it's not even a thought. Like it's already it's already kind of set in stone. Not set in stone, but it's 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 part of the plan. Yeah. And so that. That's what I'm used to in indoor, obviously, and, and right. I think it makes it, you know, super helpful. Obviously, as as the top guys in this sport would say too, I'm, I'm sure they, you know, practices with and without a coach is like night and day. Yeah, so. it's it's crazy. I mean, if, like if you look at all the top teams, like no one's doing it without a coach. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why. I mean, and it's so hard because it, it is an investment. Yeah. Um, sure. Which I mean, beach volleyball players, you know, are not known for being extravagantly wealthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so making that investment is tough, but just to see the immediate returns and dividends, it, it pays. Like it's, it's a non-option if totally. you want to take the sport serious. Totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the way I see it too. It's like, I've never, I've never really thought of myself have, wanting to have a desk job or, or having a desk yeah. job. Uh, you know, I've always, I've always just been st- straight from college, like, wanted to be a professional volleyball player and, right. and think about that alone. And so, um, 
you know, I guess I come from a place that's, that's fortunate enough to where, you know, I've, I've got, I've got friends and family who are willing to like, to back me up if I, if I ever need, you know, a place to stay or right. something like that. Um, so where I can, I can just fully chase my dreams. Yeah. You know? I, I definitely realize that I'm, I'm lucky to do, to be able to do that. Um, and I, I've saved up, you know, enough to, you know, from overseas to, to really yeah. go after this beach thing, just, you know, horse blinders on, not, yeah. not thinking about anything else. Yeah. And, um, I think that's that's sort of helped the growth right away too. Is is not having really any other other stuff going on. It's yeah. just it's just all all ball. And, yeah, you know, a little bit of travel here and there just to get my mind off things too. Right. When I'm, when I'm thinking too much or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I, I've just been super lucky to to be able to do that. It's, yeah. It's I know it's not everybody can do that, but um, it's it's nice to to be able to do that. And and I've always thought like that. So I I don't know. It's I, it's hard to see it going any other way. Hopefully, I can, you know, start to start to make a living in the sport. Yeah. Just just by the way I play. Um, yeah. Obviously, that'll take take some, take some time. But maybe I mean uh, we don't have not, an AVP yeah. schedule, but I mean when tournaments start up, yeah, you know, I, I would be more surprised than not if I mean you're not in more main draws and you're not. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I think that uh, it'll take a year or two, but I, I have no reason why. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, man. Like, coming into this year, the goal the goal, basically was to make a main draw. And yeah. I feel like those goals have shifted. I feel like I sh- now, I'm, now I'm thinking more, all right, let's get deep into a, into a tournament. Yeah. You know, let's, let's start to think about, like, late, late Saturdays, early, you know, possibly a Sunday. Right. And... Um, that's that's what I'm thinking about now. Yeah. First year, you know, and uh, so that's that's a fun thing to think about, and and possibly, you know, when the when the schedule comes out, get to get to thinking about some overseas, you know, some international tournaments yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, what is uh, what's kind of the the goal? I mean, you strike me not as like a, a super type A, but someone who has like a, a direction. Like you came into beach and you had your ducks in a row, like you saved up and now you can kind of, you can get a coach, you make the investment, which almost no beach players do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's rare. Yeah. Um, so I feel like you probably have a direction that you're, you're heading towards. Yeah. I mean, like, I, like I said though, I, the, the goals, I didn't, I didn't even have that international thought in my mind yeah i was thinking okay 2024 might be tough so let's let's take it you know let's pump the brakes a little bit on, right. on international stuff just like get my feet wet in the avp you yeah know, build build this year just learn this year whatever but i don't know i think the way everything's gone i need to start and i have i've started thinking about um you know let's get some international points let's yeah. start to let's start to see if i can sort of throw my hat in the ring and, yeah and speed this process up a little bit yeah because um, i think that i mean right now is actually the perfect time to yeah. invest in the international because I mean, if you think about it phil and nick are done after this year right um jake is done after this year hayden's points are finally going to be washed out i think <laughs> rosie casey like all these guys are going to be done internationally and we don't know like what taylor's going to do sure. what try and trevor are going to do and so there's just going to be this huge mix up right. and there's this dearth of blockers i mean andy is going to be great, and he's going to start getting points. Um, he, right. He's playing in the second Cancun event. Right. Right. Um, right. So I think that if you could get enough points where you'd at least be an option to get pulled in, yeah, um, just so yeah. you're available. Yeah, that's the, that's the goal. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, just get to the point where I'm good enough and well-known enough to, yeah, just to be an option yeah. there. And that's really all I can hope for. Um, so, yeah, I mean... It's part of the yeah. It's part of the it's part of the goals now for yeah. for this quad is to uh, just keep just keep the head down and keep working hard and see what opportunities might come. That's yeah. kind of just how I've always done it, and uh, you know have those lofty goals, but also also just keep the head down and don't really listen to anybody. Right. Um, if they if they tell you you're doing great, you know? right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like it's nice to come up for air every once in a while, but yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of how I've always operated. It's just. Uh, yeah, keep the keep the head down and grind. Don't yeah. listen. Don't listen too much to to either either the haters or the or right. the, the the yay sayers. So, right. Yeah. How much does it help you? Like just knowing that. I mean, you were fantastic in high school. 
you almost won that national championship in college, but you got there, and then you you were very good overseas for a while, and were close to Olympic level caliber. I mean, um, I have a feeling that that would do a fair amount for your confidence, knowing that you can pick up a relatively new game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a really good question because <laughs> it's volleyball for me has always come so second nature and. On the one hand, in the indoor, I think after you get to a certain level, it's just really hard to make that yeah. next jump to like Olympic level. I think for me, it's probably first and foremost stay healthy, but also, yeah, I think you know to get to as a setter to get to the level that Michael was at would have been a you know a, a long time. It would have taken a long time for me to right. do. Um, but in this case, yeah, picking up a new game. While it's semi, you know, it's the same sport, some somewhat, you know, there's similar skills, but it's a different different sport entirely, pretty much. Um, it's, I would say, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's just, it's the same but to totally it. different. Yeah, you know, yes. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's the same basic rules, and you can pass set and hit, but then after that. I mean, the courts are different sizes, yeah. they're different surfaces, there's different people on the court, and then the rules are yeah. totally different. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess to answer your question, it would just ask me again in like three months, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, don't know yeah. I don't know how this whole learning, learning process is going to go, and, and I'm, I guess in terms of volleyball players go I'm like kind of right in, right into the beginning of my prime yeah. you know 27 and the guy the other guys who have made the switch like after a after an indoor pro career you know Dave Lee Paul Lottman Reed Pretty yeah those guys are all kind of getting into their older years when they did it right so uh, there isn't really a blueprint for for how to how to do it right and so I'm sort of just um listening to myself and my body and and trying to figure it out from there and and sort of almost forgetting that I was an indoor like trying to forget that I was an indoor player yeah. so in some in some ways it's it's good to like understand that um the skills are different and so it's you're just learning new skills entirely yeah but in the same token you know a lot of those um a lot of those things you know shouldn't shouldn't be forgotten so it's like it's balancing it's balancing whether or not to forget the skills or to like what what to what to bring over from indoor that's that's kind of been my mental struggle is like you know i i used to here's how i used to think about blocking and and like does this apply and and if it does like do i just like double down on it right. or if it doesn't apply like do i you know, do I just scrap it entirely and, and yeah. you know, and forget that I ever played indoor because, you know, there's no looking back. But right. in, this, in the same sense, like, I would still, you know, I would still love to play, play, per, you know, indoor volleyball at some, at some capacity. I, you know, I see myself as a volleyball player. And if I, you know, got the, got the call to go back to the national team for, you know, train for a winter, like, there's no, no beach going on. So, like, right. yeah, yeah I'd, I'd be interested. Let's do yeah. it. I'm, you know, I'm curious. I want to, I want to play, play volleyball, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, well, Dave Lee gets this like random, like crazy contracts in like India. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like twenty grand for a month. I'm like, jeez, yeah. so sign me up. <laughs> Damn, Dave. Yeah, th that was that's that was quite the interesting <laughs> league. Um, I've heard some good stories and some horror stories from that, from that league. I bet we won't have to, we don't have to go into those. But um, yeah, I mean, I just. I look back to the days of, you know, all the all the all the guys in the '80s and the '90s where they they both played, or they all played both. Right. And um, in a lot of cases, during the national team, you know, summer they would get to go play in some ABP tournaments. Yeah. Which, for me, that's like that's kind of the dream, you know, like yeah. being able to play both and just hop back and forth and being that that well-rounded of a volleyball player would be kind of a, a fun a fun goal to have but um you know that's that's sort of a pipe dream and yeah currently my mind is just all on beach and that's 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 how i'm treating this year and have you did forward, you ask yeah. any of the indoor guys for advice on how to make that transition yeah you know i haven't i haven't really reached out a whole lot yet um 
that's something I've been meaning to do. Because Brian Cook was a fantastic yeah, beach player yeah. before. Yeah. I mean, he's had like a hundred different surgeries, sure. and I don't know if he's going to be able to play beach or if he even wants to yeah. like deal with it anymore. Yeah. But he was so freaking good. Yeah, man, and he's somebody who he grew up on the beach too. Yeah. So that's so he's already kind of had that a in his easier. blood. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little easier for for somebody like him. But yeah, I mean, somebody. Somebody like Reed or Dave Lee, those those guys are you know they're they're so habitual in, in what they did in the indoor and they were so good for so long that I would be really curious to see like ha, you know what what are the biggest habits they had to unlearn yeah um, you know what are the what are the mental things that they really had to figure out because it's just a it's a whole different battle when you're it's just you and another guy out there yeah you can't hide yeah um, you know. And and not not that those guys were ever really hiding on the court in the indoor like right. you know, a couple of couple of gold medalists but yeah um, yeah just things like that 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 I think they would they would probably know all about so it's, those are probably some guys that I, I should reach out to and, yeah yeah what's the, I mean what's the toughest thing you talked about unlearning skills but what's been one of the tougher things to learn from indoor so I feel like as a setter I mean you obviously don't use your platform a ton. Yeah, I mean, I would say setting is one. It's just going to take a long time for me to feel solid. Okay. With it. Um, passing, yes. I yeah. Mean, all of them. I can, the I, can, I can just say all of them. Just <laughs> the run, the, run the gamut. <laughs> no, I mean, another another one that I, I think is sort of a glaring thing that I actually had a pretty good day today with was is blocking. Yeah. Um, I'm used to just taking a part of the court. Yeah, you know, that's when my zone, when and I take 10. it, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> and <laughs> and now it's like, yeah, now it's it's different. You gotta you gotta make a real impact out there, and yeah. you have to take up almost half the court. Yeah, you know, with what you do, and so that's it's almost less of a skill skill challenge and change than a than a mental and, and oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, mental battle. So. Man, but seriously, like all everything, every skill is just a little bit different. So yeah, there's there's not one that I could say like, yeah, this is the one that's most glaring. But every tournament, I'm just like, oh, that's the one I need to be better at. Right. Or you know, after a week of practice, and I'm terrible at passing, you know, the whole week. Yeah. It's like, all right, passing. Spending, is. Yeah. <laughs> spending next week with an extra 15 minutes or 20 minutes. It's also, practice. I think, so great that you're learning to play with by far the most difficult ball. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you go back to a Wilson, it's it's like training wheels again. It's yeah. unreal. Like when you start trying to pass the Mikasa, and then the Wilson, it's like, oh, you go right to me. Yeah. You don't just dive out of the air for no reason at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> luckily, the, I mean, luckily though, like it's very similar to the indoor ball. True. That's what I've heard. What I've been playing with, you know, for seven years now. So. Yeah. Yeah, in a way, it's it it dances more in the wind. It's like it's a little more nasty. It's yeah, yeah. It's tougher to set without spin, probably. But in the same token, it's like it's it's more what I'm used to. So it's yeah. it's a little easier for me to manipulate and and kind of know where it's going a little bit more. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I still don't know which one I like better. <laughs> it's definitely more fun to hit the Mikasa, just shoulder wise. You can like, beat the crap out of yeah, that thing. Yeah. One thing that uh, I'm I'm really curious about that uh, I didn't think about until like just now is that so you mentioned that it would have taken years to get to Micah Christensen's level yeah. and obviously I mean he's the best setter on the planet yeah. um, and here this morning we had you and Micah Ma <laughs> yeah. to USA national team setters I mean what is the mindset of a setter right now if you're an American setter are you just like I'm just fighting for the bench warming spot behind Mike Christensen. Yeah, I mean, which is no harsh. small task, too. Yeah. Like, because then you got Kavika. He's been around for a while, right? Yeah, Kavika's I think 32, 33, something like that. Sorry, Kavika, I don't, I can't remember your age. <laughs> he's like six years older than me. Okay, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, he's he's one of the kind of the team captains, and but he's in a battle right now, you know, to be that. That second guy with, with Josh uh, Tuniga. Okay. Yeah. So like that's that position is just stacked with, yeah. with talent and a lot of guys whose hands are far better than mine. And yeah. Guys who are probably more natural setters than me too. So um, is it I mean I, I never played in or I don't know the game all that well. Yeah. Um is it normal to have a setter at six foot eight, or is it more on the smaller side? It's of things? getting more normal, okay. I would say. Um there's yeah, a couple I can of guys see overseas. how it can be a weapon, like with just what setters are able to do indoors, yeah. just yeah. like 
thunking yeah. the ball. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the challenge can be connecting with your middle blocker because you're touching it at the same height. Yeah. So a lot of middles, are they grow up being used to getting the ball on the way up. Right. And so they can just kind of tee off and, you know, hit down. Yeah. And what they have to do is, like, I have to just basically tap it. And, and you're, you're just, like, teeing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they're, and they're not quite as used to it, and it's harder okay. to set a gap set. Yeah. It's, it's just, a, yeah, it's just kind of, a, it presents some weird challenges, and it's harder to get to a ball, like, off the net because you got to be lower to yeah. get under it. You know, same idea as, as on the beach. You just yeah. got to try and take it at its lowest point as you're, if you're a setter, at least coming off the net. Yeah. Um, but there, I think internationally there are more setters. I think, uh, I'm trying to think of a few. I mean, there's... Butko in, in Russia is like six seven six six. Okay. And then there's Janelli in, in Italy. He's kind of the main like tall guy. He's, okay. He's six eight. He's just kind of dishing it around from like the top of the antenna, <laughs> and he he attacks pretty regularly. So okay. It's it's becoming more normal, but I would say the proto prototypical setter is Micah. You know, like six okay. six can hit with both hands, which is insane. Yeah. I mean, he I hits mean, lefty. I don't even know what hand he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's pretty much ambidextrous, but yeah, he, he was just built to set, and yeah. he was going to be great at it from thirteen years old. <laughs> so yeah, from I don't know ridiculous. Micah, um, obviously know of him, um, but he just seems like the greatest athlete. I mean, he's like a scratch yeah. golfer. Yeah, it's just like this yeah, fully was, ambidextrous. I think he was like, like all state in basketball, basketball. too. Yeah, yeah so yeah, he's he's a pretty legit athlete. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to have him on the podcast. No, it's not beach, but. Shoot, just volleyball. Yeah, but I'm at this sure. Point. I mean, I'm sure you grew up on the baby court at, at Outrigger with yeah. all those guys too. And yeah. Maybe maybe didn't play quite as much. I don't know. I, I could could be completely wrong. But yeah, he's you know he grew up with all those guys with the crabs and everybody. Yeah. And, and uh, so he he's got a beach background for sure. Yeah. yeah. It'd be it'd be really interesting to to see some of those guys who are on the national team right now, like Micah Ma. Yeah. He he could be out here with us for a little bit this summer. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm hoping to get him out there a little bit. Yeah. I mean he's cuz obviously he grew close. up baby court and he's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that guy's an unbelievable athlete too. So, um and you know, he could he could make that switch really really quickly. Yeah. Uh so that's somebody who who could be possibly out there playing with us and so yeah, some of those it'd be fun to see some of those guys from the national team yeah. make make a little switch like during summer where they're where they're not playing national team or, or something like that. Yeah, because there's some really really fun athletes on the team. Oh yeah, and if they spent six months doing it, they could be you know one of the best players out here. I yeah. think. Um, How hard do you think it is for someone at that Olympic caliber level to then come down? And maybe not break pool in like a CBVA. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that. That just mentally has to just be like, yeah, like so hard. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of what I had to go like in, to a lesser extent. It's kind of what I had to yeah. go through the first couple of tournaments here. Yeah, um, it's a challenge, man. I mean, you're you're used to being the best player on your team, probably overseas. Yeah, you're used to you know competing at a super super high level and being able to to control the ball at an unbelievable level yeah and make make the ball do things that you know not a lot of humans can can do yeah and then all of a sudden you're out there with somebody who didn't you know got, got kicked like, off their team in like college you, like and, you lose and, to a guy who's like drinking bud light yeah. at switches and you're just like and what? he's 45 years old yeah <laughs> like that that's gotta hurt you know yeah. like, it's gotta hurt every bone in your body yeah. so yeah uh, that's that's one of the biggest challenges too. Yeah. It's just like being able to deal with that the, that first like three months of really sucking. Yeah. <laughs> just get through the suck. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the mindset that I came into this with, and I think it's serving me really well because uh, you know I, I'm coming out there like pretty much feeling humble every time. Like, okay, I could get my ass kicked today. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Like, it's a kind of a good little thought to have in your in the back of your head. You know, in, in most cases. Yeah. Well, um, I think if you go in, if like if you're playing with a group at practice where you could get your ass kicked, like you're in a pretty good group. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. You're getting better, and that little bit of fear, if you've if you've worked to to sort of learn how to put that behind you and sort of push you from behind. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's sort of where that's all you can ask for in, in like a mental set, mental mindset before you go into a, into a practice or a game is, yeah. is having a little bit of fear. Cause if you don't, if you're not a little bit nervous or whatever, 
it's you're just going to come out flat. You're not going to be quite ready. You're, yeah. You know, you won't get the, as much out of it. Yeah. So, and yeah. just it's just kind of boring. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I love it when when people are like. They always ask me if I get nervous before tournaments. I'm like, yeah, but I like love that feeling. Yeah. Like that just means you're doing something that you're so yeah. invested in. Like right. I think it's so great. Right. Yeah. And that's that is in in the first like two or three months that I was sort of making the transition, like from November till January. I kept telling Molly this too and, and my family. I was like, I'm gonna do a bunch of I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bunch of things in these next couple of months that I'm super afraid to do. Like, yeah. I'm gonna call a bunch of people that I probably shouldn't be calling and and like I'm gonna be afraid to move down to Hermosa and like devote my whole life to this. Yeah. Um but what I've done in the past, I think kind of avoiding a lot of fear yeah. has ha- hasn't served me. Yeah. So doing things that I I fear and recognizing like feeling that kind of in your chest. And you're like, no, you know what? I'm going to push through that. And on the other side of that is something really powerful. Yeah. And, and like, it could be really, really fun. Yeah. And that's that's where all the joy in life is, honestly. Yeah. Like you start to learn. That's that's what's most important. It's just finding those things that make you feel that little mm-hmm. that little like twinge in your yeah. chest, and and then you're like, oh yes, that's yeah. that's it. That's the like, one. That's what I need to do. Yep. I love that. Have you? I know you're a reader. I have. Tools of Titans yep, over there. That's and, one of my favorite books. And yeah. uh, I forget who said it, but the but the quote is like everything you want is on the other side of the fear. Other side of fear, yeah. And I think that's just perfect. Oh my god, who said that? I don't know. We'll, it is perfect. We'll, we'll look yeah. after. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's so spot on. Like, I, I I think that's a that's a major shift in my mindset from early on in my college days and then a little bit again after I went pro started to sort of develop a little bit of like okay that's that's scary I'm just gonna do something else yeah that that shift in mindset if you're if you're young out there listening or whatever that's that's something that you can start to train in yourself and you can get better at yeah you can get better at recognizing that uh and being able to yeah understand that that's what that fear that's what that is it's fear and it's all just in here and in here yeah and just use it yeah just use that i love that yeah and uh i know that uh, one topic that we wanted to make sure we covered sure. was uh your alma mater mm-hmm. uh stanford so i don't know exactly what happened or what is going on so yeah, the program do we. <laughs> yeah so the program like one of the most prestigious programs ever yep so it got cut and so there's no there is no Stanford men's indoor team at the moment, right? They're they're it, in the middle of their last season. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, the kind of in the middle of the pandemic last last summer, uh, sort of when all the commotion was happening and all yeah. the social unrest, they came out with a statement. Completely didn't warn anybody. They didn't send out any emails. They just had a had a, like a little Zoom meeting for 15 minutes with all the coaches and the players of all the programs that got cut. There's 11 of them. Yeah. And they basically told them, "All right, this is your last season. We're cutting, you know, we're we're cutting it down to 25 sports. You know, if you want to if you want to accept donations for the future or try and fund your program, you can fund it as a club team." Yeah. And that's that, you know. By closed door. Jeez. And so, obviously, first thing we we did was tr- try to reach out to them to. Well, we organized. We got you know hundreds of alum alums of the just just the men's volleyball program alone. We all had you know Zoom meetings every yeah. three days to try and you know come up with a plan, try and figure out okay what's our plan of attack here. Uh, who do we reach out to in the in the university? Who you know, you know, kind of the movers and shakers and right. you know, people making decisions and who knows a board a board member, a board of trustees, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then we got to the point where all right, we need to start thinking about like their 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 reasoning that they gave was okay, we don't have enough money to fund these programs anymore. Right. And as it is right now, the athletic department is you know highly. Uh, in the in the deficit, they're they're you know operating way way underwater, and we need to cut these sports to to try and help save that. Yeah, and that was just complete BS because we found out that you know for the most part they've been doubling or tripling or whatever the 
the amount of um, like benefits and salary for for administrative staff oh. and you know entertainment on on road trips for football and basketball and stuff like that. Uh, so it was just total bogus you yeah. know, crap that they gave us, and they weren't willing to. You know, when we presented them, okay, here we can we can work to f- fully endow the programs by ourselves. We, you don't even have to pay for us anymore. Yeah, they didn't really want to hear it, anyways. Yeah, and so what's happened recently um, is you know a couple of things have happened. Like uh, I'm not I'm not sure if you saw there's there's a wrestler at Stanford who won the national championship. Okay, he turned his singlet inside out, so it didn't say Stanford on the front; it was just black. Huh? And he went and won the national championship. And made a you know had a, had a great interview yeah. on, on TV afterwards talking about how you know we want to save the program and yeah. so wrestling was one of the programs that got cut. They've been sort Damn. of they've been I mean for the past twenty five years they've been battling getting cut. Yeah, every I feel like every wrestling, year. I feel like every wrestling program is like yeah. always yeah, like just right there. Yeah, and Stanford's been you know sort of they, they've always claimed to be the bastion of Olympic sports and, yeah. and you know being an Olympic sports feeder and. Uh, you know that that that's true for the men's volleyball program as well. Like the yeah. Shoji's, the you know, um, who else? Mike Lambert. You know, Ferbs was yeah you know, a, a, a very close to being an Olympian. We should we had him on a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he was freaking episode, awesome. Yeah, he was amazing. great. He's a great guy too. Yeah. he's one of my one of my you know my mentors. I, I look up to him a lot. Um, who else? And I mean, tons Mike, of guys. Well, did Micah? Is he Steph? No, 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 he's a he's an SC guy. Okay, yeah. But you know, tons of guys in the past who've uh, who else? It's a, I mean, it's pretty Scott long Fortune. list. Yeah, long list. Yeah, and so back to the back to the point. It's like, all right, this is this is supposed to be our our values here at Stanford. We want to we want to be this uh, this this Olympic sports hub. Yeah, and we're cutting all these Olympic sports. Like, yeah, what's the deal? Like, what's the mix up here? And so. Um, now what the, what the deal is we've we've come together as an eleven sport group instead of going at it one sport you know each yeah and and we've gotten a lot of alums on board uh, Corey Booker who was a you know U.S. Okay. senator yeah, yeah. Um, Andrew Luck you know Jim Plunkett a lot, a lot of big name people who are alums and and well respected in the in the Stanford community they're saying all right we're, I'm not going to donate any more any more money to this to the school if if these programs don't get reinstated yeah. And so we've got, I think, around four thousand signatures on this big petition that, that okay. we uh, sent back to the to the university. Um, it's like a long letter. And if you're a Stanford alum out there listening, and, and you haven't, you know, signed the petition, sign yeah. the petition because we need more. We need more more numbers. But like, is there? I mean, is there a way that you could get someone, like, say, an Andrew Luck, to be basically like a patron, of, and just fund the program on his own? Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's the. That would be the hope yeah. for, for men's volleyball. We that's kind of the thing is we don't really have that one person necessarily that right. that can can back the program okay. with one check. But um, you know, if you're out there again, <laughs> yeah, you know who to talk to. Uh, <laughs> me. Um, no, there's better better avenues. But uh, yeah, I mean, the the idea now we've we've uh, actually yesterday the, the the group had a meeting with the, the university president, the the provost. Um, some board board members were on that call as well. They said it went well, and they're they're, I think, going back to now discuss. Uh, the university is to go to go back to discuss to uh, to see like what what our what our options are for how to reinstate reinstate yeah. the program. So that's promising. There's still a lot of work to to be done to actually get that to be done. Um, but we're moving in the right direction, I think. And yeah. We just we still need a ton of support and donation, pledging pledging money to to possibly back any yeah. of those eleven programs. And um, and it, again, you know, if you're an alum, or even if you're not a, an alum, you can send a letter to the to the university saying how you you know it's completely abhorrent and disdainful right. what they're doing. And um, yeah, I mean. Any help is is welcome. You yeah, know, it's it's something that's obviously close to my heart, and it's, it's a big part of the volleyball community. And there's a lot of people yeah, who for sure. who have connections, you know, with that program. So we just don't want to see it it go because if if that program goes, then you know the the dominoes could fall after that. So we yeah. just want to make sure that doesn't happen. And yeah.
So yeah. good deal. Well, Stanford's moving forward. You're yeah. obviously moving forward pretty dang fast as a beach <laughs> yeah. player. Yes, sir. Um, so where can uh, our listeners follow you and kind of keep track of, of your progress and journeys? Yeah, I mean, mostly on Instagram, James W. Shaw or J. Walker Shaw or something like that. Just type in James Shaw. I'm either, yeah, I'm, I'm not the one who uh, is the New Zealand Prime Minister of Agriculture. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy I get confused with. Or there's like a Canadian musician out there, I think, too. Um, but yeah, so you can find me on Instagram. Uh Normally, that's that's where I'm hanging out. Um, I have a TikTok too, but that's not that's that's really fun. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> I'm actually coming out with uh, um, a little bit of a, a travel vlog with Molly. Nice, um, we're, gonna, be fun. we're gonna announce that pretty soon, so maybe even before this this show airs. Nice, um, so yeah, we like to go do that in our free time and and sort of show the show the travel behind the scenes footage. And yeah, yeah, so that that's something that you can follow along with if you're if you're interested and. But mostly, yeah, you can find everything that I'm up to on Instagram. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, well, dude, thanks for hanging. Glad thanks to have for, you over. Thanks for having me. I, this has been sort of a little dream of mine, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry since, Trax couldn't the join. Beginning. No, it's no <laughs> I know he's deal. kind of the star attraction, but uh, no, no yeah, it's great chatting. It's great chatting with you, man. Yeah, I'll yeah. see you. Sorry this morning, sorry today, and I'll yep. see you tomorrow see morning. See you tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shoots, <laughs> shoots, man. Shoots. Awesome.